Hello and welcome to my presentation about the Burroughs 24 release. Burroughs 24 will be released in November 2024. In this presentation I will show the most important new features of Burroughs 24. These are the new dedupable backend, the new Python plugin architecture, just-in-time reservation for devices, warm volume support, natively built Windows binaries, the new cloud storage backend and other enhancements. Let me start with the dedupable storage backend. To better understand the dedupable storage backend I will first explain the standard format being used by Bereos. The storage format is the same for all media and was initially designed for tapes. As tape format, it does not require random access and uses the storage space efficiently. The format was designed so that data can be extracted with command line tools. The storage format consists of records and blocks. Both records and blocks have a header containing metadata like checksums and information to which backup job the data belongs to. Identically backed up data blocks create different blocks on the backup medium. Unfortunately, this makes the standard backup format unsuitable for most deduplication technologies, which detect identical blocks using fixed block sizes. Now let us have a look at the new dedupable storage format. The design goal of the new format is to make sure that identical original blocks will be stored as identical backup blocks on the storage medium. To achieve this goal, data is written into multiple files. Metadata information is stored into different files than data blocks, and data blocks are stored on block borders. To be able to optimize the format for different environments, the block size can be configured. As a dedupable format requires random access, it cannot be stored on tape volumes directly. Here you can see the content of a dedupable volume. A directory with a volume name, in this case full01, contains five files. The config file contains the configuration of this dedupable volume. The blocks and record files contain the metadata for the blocks and records. Aligned data blocks are stored in the aligned data file. Unaligned data is stored into the unaligned data file. The next new feature is the new Python plugin architecture. Let us first have a look at the Bareos 23 Python plugin architecture. Bareos allows to write plugins in Python. The Bareos daemon loads a shared library containing the Python plugin. The Python plugin itself runs a Python sub-interpreter for every job. The Python interpreter loads the Bareos Python extension module and executes the Python plugin files. Every Bareos plugin API call is translated into a Python call which then can do the required calls back into the core. Running this architecture in bigger environments and on higher loads has shown that there are some limitations with this approach. Sub-interpreters are rarely used by other software and are not very well tested. All interpreters running in the same process share one global interpreter log, which has a big performance impact. Some modules and even Python standard library modules have problems in multi-threaded environments because of global states. To solve the limitations described, a new architecture was designed. The basic idea is to run an individual process for every backup job. The process runs a full Python interpreter, not a sub-interpreter. The communication between the core and the Python daemon process is done via gRPC. The API stays the same. No changes are required for the existing plugins. Just-in-time device reservation. Bareos originally reserved the device at the very beginning of the backup job. However, this turned out to be a problem as a lot of time can pass between the reservation and the first use of the device. For this reason, the, the reservation was moved further back in previous versions already. For example, after the execution of any existing prescripts. However, it still turned out that the previous changes were not good enough and there are still a long time intervals in which a device is not used. This is especially a problem with the expensive tape drives. 
Just-in-Time Reservation was introduced to solve this problem. So how does the Barros 23 reservation logic works? When a job starts, Barros runs the pre-scripts and then reserves a device for the job. Then the actual backup job starts. When doing incremental backups or plug-in backups, it can take a long time until the first data is written. It can even happen that no data at all needs to be written. This happens, for example, when no data was changed since the last backup. This can lead to expensive tape drives being blocked by jobs without data to be written, while other jobs that have data are waiting for the drive. To resolve the problems described before, the new just-in-time reservation reserves a device when the first datum to be written arrives. This means that only jobs that really have write data will reserve a device. Jobs that do not have any data to be written will never reserve a device. This leads to a much better utilization of the devices. Warm tape support. For archiving purposes, warm tapes are available. Warm is the abbreviation of write once, read many. Warm media can be written, but never overwritten or altered. The fact that data cannot be altered suffices legal requirements for document archival. The Barros 23 tape labeling process was not capable of using warm tapes as it requires the overwriting of the label block. First there is a written a pre-label and in a later state uh, there is a final label written. The same data blocks needs to be overwritten which is impossible on warm tapes. To support warm tapes the labeling process was changed to be a one-phase labeling. The final label is immediately written to the tape, allowing warm tapes to be used. In Barrios 23 and older, the Windows binaries have been built using a cross-compiler on Linux. The reason for that was that the building could be simply automated with the existing build pipelining for Linux binaries. The drawback was that only a limited testing could be done during the build using the Windows emulator Wine. Also, the debug information created by the cross-compiler is not compatible with the output of Visual C++. With Barrows 24, we built the Windows binaries using the Microsoft Visual C++ compiler. The whole Windows toolchain of compiler, debugger, profiler and so on can be used. We want to provide better support for the Windows operating system. And also better quality can be provided as we run both unit and system tests during the build. Other enhancements that are planned for Barrios 24 are The existing droplet cloud storage backend still requires the outdated droplet library. Barrios 24 will have a replacement backend being compatible with the droplet plugin without requiring the, the droplet library itself. Network connection setup has been optimized for network connection reliability. Barrios and DMP native backups have gained a lot of bug fixes. The Barrios project now offers ARM64 packages for selected operating systems. Thank you very much for your attention. You can find the Barrios documentation at docs.barrios.org. Please join our mailing list Barrios users. Follow us as Barrios Backup on Twitter, or X as it's called now. The Barrios source code is available at GitHub. Subscription support and consulting services are available at barriers.com. My name is Philipp Storz. Thank you very much and goodbye.